you spend much time looking through the API, one of the things that you're likely to notice is that there is a type that crops up in quite a few locations, including in the some of the methods for list, and that is the option type. So the option type in Scala is intended to represent something that may or may not have a value. And it's used broadly so that the type system can help you find certain types of errors. Uh, so that if something wasn't going to have a value, instead of causing an error, that would you know, trigger your code and the type system will actually force you to deal with it. The most obvious example of the option type that we would have at this point is a method called find. And find is a method that, ex that exists for both lists and arrays and it takes a predicate. And what it does is it's supposed to find the first item that matches that predicate or something that causes the predicate to return true. So, for example, if we make a list of one, two, three, four, five, and I try to find in that list something that is greater than six. Well, there is nothing in that list that's greater than six. And so the return value is something called none. So the option type can either be sum with a value or it can be none. Let's search for something that does exist. How about greater than three? Well, the first thing that's greater than three is four. So hopefully it should return that. And we get sum four. So if I wanted to do math with this value, after all, this is a list of ints, it turns out that I can't do math with the option type. I can do math with the value that's inside of it, assuming that it's a sum. If it's a none, then I don't have anything to do math with. And so how we're going to deal with that kind of depends upon what it is that we are doing. So in order to get the value out, there is a method called get on the option type. The problem is if you call get on a none, you get an error. And we don't want that to happen. So for many uses, if you have you can get the value, or you have some default that you would like to use if you if there is no value, then you can call get or else. And get or else takes an argument for what it should be. So I want this to give me the first value that is greater than three, or if there's nothing greater than three, I want to use the value of zero. In this case, I get the four. If I change this to be a six though, then I get the zero. And so for a lot of situations, you can use get or else to safely either give you the value or to give you some default instead. Depending upon what it, what it is that you're doing, Another way that you can work with the values inside of options are with map and flat map. These are defined on the option, just like they're defined on the list. In some ways, you can think of an option as being almost like a, a collection that either has one element or no elements. So none has no elements in it, and sum has one element in it. And map, then, will be applied to that one element, assuming it exists. And if it doesn't exist, then nothing happens, and we just get back a none. So for example, if I wanted to double the element, we've seen this function before. Well, there was nothing, so it doesn't do anything. We still get back the none. If I have the greater than three, which actually gave me back a value, this will apply this function to the contents of the sum and give us back a new sum that has that value. If the function that we were going to apply happened to be something that would give us back a different option type, we could use flat map, because otherwise we'd get an option of option of something, <clears throat> which is generally not what you want. So if you have a function that's going to give you back an option type, you should probably use a flat map instead so that you only have <clears throat> one layer of options. The other way of dealing with these things is to use a match. And it turns out that the option pattern <clears throat> or the option type makes a very nice pattern. So I have one, or one case 
which is a sum of something. Now, if I didn't want to give it a name, I could use an underscore. In this case, and if I wanted it to be a specific value, I could put in a value there. But if I want to just match it as a variable, I can say sum and give it a variable name. And let's see, print line, or how about we just say just n times five, case none is going to give us back a zero. So the match here has our two cases in it, a sum with a value or a none, and we can make it do whatever we want or give us back whatever value we want based upon which of those it is. We can also work with our option type using an if. This is probably the least common way of doing this, but the none type says that it's empty. So I can say if that dot is empty, then I would do one thing else, I would do another. Now, if I'm gonna use this, I typically want to store this thing inside of a variable because I'm gonna to have to refer to it twice. So I could say if result dot non empty result dot get times five. Here I know that the normal get is safe because it is a non empty. Uh, otherwise, I'll just do the zero. So this is the same as what the match did, but because I referred to result twice, I didn't want to have to call find twice. That would be inefficient. So I store it in a separate variable for the if. As I said, this is kind of the least common option of them. Uh, if you can use a get or else, that works great. If you need to do a bit of processing, the map is uh, or the flat map is a very good option. If you have something more complex that doesn't fit one of those, you probably want to use match. The if should be your last resort if none of the others seem to fit.